Right, so now that I see that there has been a lot of change, um, raise your hands who changed their vote first. Okay, so now uh, Anna will go and uh, next to you and ask why did you make this decision? I made the decision because I was very naive about the word compulsory. And it was that point that you made about the compulsory aspect of the debate that pushed me to the opposition. Uh, it was the same for me. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Wealth change? Yes, I think it's the third speaker also sort of made the, the difference, sort of hammering the point home about the compulsory nature of it. Uh, for me, it was both the, the duration or the clarification around the duration of the, of the leave uh, as well as uh, explanation of uh, how the incentives would work. I mean, perhaps as well, the fact of uh, unpacking the uh, incentives behind and the fact of unpacking compulsory term terminology a bit, a bit better worked, worked in this situation. Yeah. Um, well, for me, it was because I found the definition of the government quite blurry. So. We did not know uh, the length of the, uh, the parental leave. We did not know if it would uh, have been um, reimbursed. And so, okay, you, it, well, everybody is for equality, but you, we don't know how you wanted to implement it. So that's why I voted for the um, opposition. Right. Do you want to answer the question? Yes. Well, first, it's a bit easy to play with compulsory, but women have, they have to be on leave. So it's like, no one is like, oh my God, they have to. They, they, no one's shocked, but when a father has to, it's like, oh my God, he has to. But it's, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's, it is the fact. And about the, um, the length and, and the, the pay of whatever, we didn't want it to go inside the country legislation. We, we wanted to make it European, like has a, or European or worldwide, as you like, but just the idea of sharing tasks and going to uh, father taking leave as a like as a normal fact that it should become normal for for that to say like I would like to take some leave, but some that they don't do it now because they w they feel that they are going to be discriminated. So it was just a, it was more than a precise subject. It was more val moral or value discussion. You don't mind if I start to that? Um, uh, the closing speaker was very convincing when he said, you know, you pay me 80% of your salary and then I'll stay home. And I, th I think, I think it's, it's reasonable for us to say we shouldn't have to pay you as the government 80% of your salary, no matter what it is, for, in order for you to look after your kid. I think, I think it's, it's somewhat fair of us to say, do you know what, your wife has to take a salary, uh, has to take time out of work. You know, the, obviously the situation differs for women. I'd say, you know, make it equal for men than it is for women, but we shouldn't have to just bribe dads to stay home with their kids. I think we should, we should either make them if they don't want to or, you know, that's it. Uh, just going back to your point about the, let's say, the blurriness or the lack of clarification in our, our policy, we did actually take that as a conscious decision in our, our preparation, simply because the current re reality is that across European countries, across global countries, there is significant difference between how many weeks, about which time they can be started, about the actual reimbursement. So we felt it was better to concentrate for these purposes on, let's say, the moralistic grounding rather than the actual political implementation. So if we were lacking in details, we know. 
just two quick remarks. One on the on the salary reimbursement. I disagree fundamentally here because to my mind the state should reimburse people if they go on leave so that they continue with their career. And there's a great study of the Hamburg uh, World Economic uh, whatever something institute, uh, HWII in German. Um, which says that one of the, the barriers that you were talking about that women face is actually, so if you want to keep them at home, uh, if you want them to f f uh, experience problems in life, then give them a long leave and give them no reimbursement. But what you have actually to do is to get people in general back into work is to reduce the leave, somehow give them flexibility and to give them a proper reimbursement. That's why I think the reimbursement per se is important if you want to get people back, young people, and that was our point with the age inequality, young people back into, into work. Uh, and just in general, because it was often pointed out to the compulsory, um, I know that we're debating here a particular motion, but even if you go to an event of debating Europe, quite often you see people sitting there and debating something that has nothing to do or not much to do with the actual topic. So just uh, an advice it is worth to look at the actual title and to see what each of these words mean because some of them are ambivalent and then it is good to focus on them again and to, to point out that we are discussing actually compulsory here and not gender equality, which is very important for us in all the other events. To come back to the debate, the, the compulsory word is also important for gender equality because, as you said, if you want women to come back early to their job, then a, a father could take the, the other shift and the society will gain of that. So it's, it's linked and that's why compulsory is a key word that should be used. <laughs> Okay, um, another question. Um, were there arguments, and this is for the audience, were there arguments that were new to you, uh, apart from the compulsory bit, were there arguments that were uh, raised that were new to you, or you haven't thought of that? Ah, yes, I haven't thought that this is one argument that uh, is good uh, for the motion or against the motion. Anybody? Uh, in the end, I decided to stick with my original vote, making it compulsory. But I must say that the third speaker of the opposition was extremely convincing and made me doubt to the very last question whether I, to the very last second, whether I should change my vote or not, because he brought up the example of the um, the salary reimbursement and the incentives, which is something I, in advance, didn't think of. Um, and I would have probably changed my vote to vote for the opposition if all three of them would have focused on that point and explain how they would make this reimbursement possible financially by the government. Um, in the end, I opted to stick with my vote for the proposition, but I must say that, the, that this new argument brought on by a third speaker of the opposition made me doubt until the very last moment. So I, st I voted for the proposition, but I must say that he was extremely convincing in his arguments and in his replies to the questions raised by the audience as well. So I, w I wanted to know your impression about the debate in general. Do you, did you like it? Did you enjoy it? Um, so wh whoever wants to talk about it, did you find it interesting? Did you find it lively? It's just to uh, know. Yeah. Well, first, I would like to th uh, thank to all the speakers. I, I think you know you are speaking. Uh, I, I felt it was a really interesting debate. You know the arguments I was like having in my mind they came up and even even more. Uh, uh, what I think, uh, I believe that it's more difficult to argue for this motion if you start to think about it because the compulsory part of it uh, makes it. Uh, very difficult to define uh, in a free society which sort of has some individualistic uh, values. Uh, but other than that, I, f uh, I found that the speakers were well prepared and so uh, I really like it. And what I like about this format, uh, as compared to the more common formats in universities, is the engagement with the audience. I, I really like that. In my case, uh, I found it a bit too much uh, politically correct. 
and only uh, again with the famous with the famous uh, third speaker, I started to be interested into uh, really into the debate because he not he didn't treat the uh, the facts with like um, like numbers, but taking the human aspect, the human factor. That's crucial. We're talking about people, you know, and uh, just saying we, we we won't force them to do something. They have to clearly. He said like uh, we, they have to think by themselves. And they are responsible. They're supposed to be responsible people, extra. And uh, you can't so you can't treat them like uh, uh, lambda uh, neutral information. And that's what I liked. The and it stimulated my mind. I learned things. Uh, I have have written things, and he used simply a good sense, and uh, not you know playing um, with my uh, emotions. And what about my grandmother, my grandfather, or my future child? You know that's easy. That's easy to play with emotion, but talking to my mind, I prefer people uh, like this. Thank you. Actually, um, on the contrary, I like the, the debate was politically correct in a way, because these days it's kind of very strange to say that you're going against gender equality, and this was really um, kind of stepping on the thin, uh, thin ice for the opposition team, you know, here in this debate. And they managed to do it with grace very nicely. And actually no one, no one even thought that they can go actually against, against gender equality. And then they emphasized it several times and backed up with good, good arguments. So thanks a lot for that. Um, I have to echo Adam. I really enjoyed it a lot. And um, I would be definitely up for more such debates where the audience really has an active role because then the speakers are challenged not to only focus on the other side of the well of, of the other side of the of their opposition in the debate but also have to deal with questions they didn't expect before from neutral people from people that are not defending in favor or against the motion, but who are neutral. So I think that acts an that adds an extra an extra dimension to the debate, which I really liked. Okay, so if there is uh, no further comments, so thank you very much for today and a round of applause.